Hey guys, Ash here and AMD has just come out with their 5000 series Ryzen processors based on the Zen 3 architecture. And guys, I am not exaggerating. These absolutely destroy the current generation of Intel chips. So let's talk about that. So Ryzen has been competitive with Intel chips for a while now. So what is so special about the 5000 series Ryzen? And why do I think that it's gonna destroy Intel or it's probably already destroyed Intel? Like why the doomsday scenario? Well, these benchmarks, they speak for themselves, but let me break it down and put it into, into perspective for you guys. So AMD has always had the higher core count and with the third generation Ryzen processors, they were far ahead at multi-threaded workloads than Intel. Yes, they were. But when it came to single core performance, Intel still held the lead. So gaming, which is mostly dependent on per core performance, it was Intel's stronghold. Not anymore. Because guys, just look at the numbers here. This is CSGO running at 1440p and yes, this is typically a CPU bound game and we are averaging 490 frames a second. So what we are seeing here is the Ryzen 59, uh, 50X putting up numbers that frankly, I've never before seen. The Ryzen 5900X, that's not far behind either, 481 FPS on average. And now we have the same 3070 GPU that we're using. We have it paired with our Intel 10900K. And these are the numbers we're getting. 460 FPS is still very respectable, but it is lower than the 481 and 490 FPS. Okay, so maybe CSGO was a fluke. So let's try some other game, right? Next, we have GTA 5, another CPU intensive game. And here the frame rates at 1440p all maxed out. We have an average of 90.6 FPS with the 5950X, 83.7 with the 5900X. The 10900K on the other hand, paired with the same GPU, does around 79 FPS. I think you can see the trend here. By the way, if you wanna see more PC related content delivered directly to your smartphones, then consider subscribing to C4 Tech and hitting that bell icon so that you become part of a notification squad. In fact, we benchmarked quite a few games and the Ryzen 5900X just kept on impressing. And yes, this is the top end chip, but all 5000 series Ryzen chips that have released till date, they've shown amazing performance. For now, this is the lineup. Uh, I, let, I let it be on screen for a bit. Pause if you wanna go through. Five, four, three, two, one, moving on. So all these are X-series chips that have been released by AMD. And I'm sure we will see more Ryzen 5000 chips being launched in the future. As you can see, the 5900X is outdoing the 10900K constantly. And here's the kicker. The 10900K costs about 46,500 rupees and the 5900X, it's priced just a few thousand more. Well, we don't have the 5800X with us. It should be able to provide five to 10% performance uplift compared to the 10900K on most games, showing AMD definitely owns Intel this time around. So yeah, this is the reason I'm so excited about the 5000 series Ryzen chips. Not only are the gains huge, they've come in uh, in the form of 19% IPC gains. Basically, this means we get significant gains in single core performance. Now, the reason this is so important is because Intel has held that great gaming crown for so long. Uh, you know, that's thanks and lash to their higher single core performance. But now AMD has snatched that away as well. So how did AMD manage to come across this huge gains for the third generation Zen processors? Here's Amartya with an explanation. When AMD was building their Zen 3 architecture, they had three fundamentals in mind. Number one, power. Number two, latency. And number three, efficiency. Now, one interesting thing to note here is that the 19% IPC improvement that we mentioned earlier for the fifth generation Ryzen, all of that has come from AMD reworking the cache on the Zen 3 architecture. Now, how is it different? Well, all Ryzen 5th generation processors come with a unified cache. Let's take for example the 8 core Ryzen 7 5800X. It comes with 32 MB of L3 cache. Now, if this had been Zen 2, what we would have seen is two quad core chiplets. Okay, the quad core chiplets is still there, but what we now have is instead of each chiplet having their own 16 MB of cache, there's a unified 32 megabytes of cache that all eight cores can access to whenever they want. So this leads to an increase in performance as well as a decrease in latency. So the performance is great, but what is the catch? Does it heat up a lot? After all, AMD has had a bad rep in the past for having processors that might as well be room heaters. What temperatures did we get? Well, we tested out temperatures on a Ryzen 9 5900X and the max it hit was 83 degrees Celsius under full synthetic load. 
that's with a Hyper 2 and 2 Black Edition. By the way, guys, the Ryzen 7 and the 9s, they do not come with an included cooler, but the Ryzen 5 comes with a RAID Stealth. As far as our test bench setup is concerned, we have we had it on a X570 motherboard from MSI paired with Gigabyte's RTX 3070 Gaming OC Edition. 32 gigs of RAM at 3600 MHz, of course, like all previous Zen architectures, Zen 3 also loves fast memory, so we had it uh, with XMP enabled. Other than that though, everything was left to stock, but going by track record, Ryzen 5000, it should be pretty easy to overclock. I uh, guess another advantage that AMD has over Intel. Unlike Intel, every Ryzen processor is unlocked out of the box. So with good enough VRM cooling and a nice CPU cooler, we should be able to overclock them without much issue. In conclusion, if you are building a PC in the near future, I see no reason why you'd want to go with anything other than a 5000 series Ryzen. And even if you are upgrading, well, if you have an older B550 or X570 board, then Ryzen, the 5000 series should be as easy as a drop and replacement. Of course, after a BIOS upgrade. 400 series motherboard owners might be in luck as well. But as far as older motherboards go, AMD won't be supporting them uh, from Ryzen 5000 onwards. So yes, uh, even when it comes to support for older generation motherboards, AMD has done quite a good job here. Better than Intel at least, who have stuck to limiting compatibility for two generations of CPUs and two generations of boards for ages now. By the way, this is the destructive pricing AMD has launched the 5000 series at. Don't get fooled by the naming strategy. At every step, the Ryzen 5000 series offers better performance to the point that it's not even a competition anymore. Things are looking very grim indeed for Intel. Even with their rumored IPC improvements, the 11 Gen CPUs should just be able to match their Ryzen counterparts in single core performance and they should be falling behind in multi-core because of the lower number of cores. So for now, the future seems to be very rosy for Team Red, barring a miraculous comeback by Team Blue. As someone who dislikes monopolies, I've waited, I've waited for long to see this day, but I hope Intel can buck up and get competitive soon since, of course, that competition is always best for us consumers. Anyway, this was the AMD Ryzen 5000 series. Next stop, build a PC with it. So what price point would you like for me to hit for the PC build? Leave a comment down below and whatever you guys want, I'll make sure that happens. So that's it, thumbs up, thumbs down, based on whatever you felt about this video, subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching, till next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day, bye-bye.